We want you. Am am. Joey, there's no living with with a killing. There's no going back from one. Right and wrong, it's a brand. A brand sticks. There's no going back. Now you run on home to your mother and tell her. Tell her everything's all right. You asked to rob your Get truck, truck right out of my face. It's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You might be qualified, Emil. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now, Albert? Hey, kids, it's your old pal, M.L. Elric, and I can't tell you how excited I am that this show will post in less than a week or two <laughs> after it's recorded, which is a, a old thing for us. We're hoping it becomes a new thing for us now that we have been liberated from the clutches of, of uh, let's just say, uh, large corporations and, uh, and the, uh, the reach of people who may choose to reach further than they should feel comfortably reaching. So we've got some fresh content for you today. Uh, We're just in from out of the cold with uh, co-host and producer Mark Fellhauer, uh, uh, intriguer du jour, um, Sean Windsor. That's another French word. uh, You can look it up on your own. What, intriguer? Uh, I didn't even think about that. I think that is two. Maybe that's three French words. Two French words and a preposition. But I think a word's a preposition. Gour. Oh, you writers. Gare, gare, intriguer. But And we're also, thanks to Joey, doing Facebook Live for the first time. So if you're watching us at your desktop, uh, tell the boss that this is educational, this will make you a better employee, and that you'll stay late to make up the time. And check out the sweet swag we have. If you hey. want to get some of our gear, you can go to the DrewAndMikeStore.com. Uh, we could use your support because at present, uh, this little cobbling thing here is pretty much the only thing keeping... The lights on and my solar power. I know. So this is our only gig. Two of us. I mean, Sean's got a paying gig. Yeah, Sean works for a newspaper. So pretty soon, this will be supporting three people. If you want to call it work, <laughs> so <laughs> so please uh, and you feel free to donate. You can send us uh, generous amounts of money. Uh, you can go to mlsolvedetroit.com. Mark, what do they do once they get there? Uh, there's a donate button. Imagine that, and you That's just uh, press it, and it takes you over to PayPal. Where would be where would we be without Mark on the technical front? I know. So it's I know. It's the internet. It's crazy. It's you're just going to use the money for more Ray Bans. Is that what you're wearing? No. These. Uh, I think these. These. Uh, oh I yeah. Can't these imagine are. You actually yeah, pay sorry. for a pair of Ray Bans. These are Ray Bans. The last. I see them. These are the last pair of glasses I got under the uh, the Fox Two Vision plan. Oh, which, uh, okay. <laughs> we did have very good benefits at Fox Two. I will tell you that. So I'm I'm hoping my next potential employer is is equally. Uh, Patrician. Um, sometimes it's it's not good matrician, brother. No, well, it could be matrician. It could be non-binary rician. Okay. Use whatever bathroom you want. Just wash your hands when you come out. That's all I ask. Um, and uh, and my my asks are modest. Like uh, like one of the things I ask people to do is you know why not enter a major financial transaction with uh, our friends at Hall Financial. They have a couple questions for the good people listening to The Soul of Detroit. Are you paying more than 4% on your mortgage? Do you have lingering high interest rate credit card debt? Okay, that's pretty much everybody, right? Well, you may or may not know that right now rates are within fractions of a percentage point of their lows over the last decade. A smart idea would be to call the company with over 1,000 five-star reviews. I made it 1,001 recently when they closed a very complicated transaction to help me buy a rental property in East Lansing. They're averaging 10 days from start to finish on applications for refinance of mortgages. That's pretty good. Took me a little while longer, but mainly because it's tough to close a deal when one of the questions is, will you still be employed by the time we have the closing? And your answer is, next question. They don't like to hear things like that, but Hall Financial, particularly Dan Morrison and Shannon Bearcott, they find ways to make this happen. Like the whole team at Hall Financial, they want to put you in a deal, and they will do what they can to make it happen. The process for everyone else is simple, and it's no secret that saving money is smart. They even put it in capital letters with two exclamation points. You can get started by calling 248-308-5000. That's 248 248- 308-5000, or going to davidhallmortgage.com. Tell them ML sent you. Yeah, please. Yes, Make get sure over there. 
you know, rates are still historically low, so you want to call Hall Financial. Become Don't just a, take my word for it. Find out for yourself. Become a slumlord like ML's becoming in East Lansing. I wouldn't say we're slumlords yet. We're yet. not even lords yet. <laughs> yet. We, we have a manor, but we have not lorded over it. Although we all have my, goals. My wife keeps putting wreaths on there. She's like, I put some more wreaths on there. I said, you know, it's January. She said, yeah, but I trash picked these. Hey, that reminds me of something. Uh-oh. Finish the hall read. Oh, um, because I haven't talked to you about this. But yes, go ahead. Uh, Hall Financial has nearly one thousand five star reviews from their clients for a reason, and they they really do a good job, folks. I, we we, and I should probably tell you this: we don't just take any sponsor. We have turned down people because we didn't think it was appropriate for we, for we our have? audience. A couple people. Can we get them back? And, and also because there's just you know I'm still a journalist. Sean's a journalist. Uh, I'll do anything for, for a dollar. Journalism. Yeah. We, we don't think there's some advertisers that aren't appropriate for us. We shouldn't be doing politics. We shouldn't be doing slip and fall law firms. We shouldn't be doing anybody that we might have to expose later. So if we are speaking for somebody, it's usually a sign that we've had some personal experience with them or no one's told us they're a complete bum yet. So, uh, so, so far, so good. Um, if you want to check in and see something that makes sense for you, go to davidhallmortgage.com to get started or call 248-308-5000 and make sure to tell them ML Sold Detroit sent you equal housing lender NMLS. See, there's an ML right in the middle, 146-743-FIVER. So you, you mentioned wreaths. Uh, do you still have your Christmas lights up? I thought I saw a post on social media that you still have your Christmas lights up. You paid for Christmas lights? This this is like when... Uh, He's got all that so- solar power. Sean. This is like when somebody told me, um, uh, are you still going to have a question. job when we close it? Next question. We So my, uh, my daughter uh, has a birthday coming up, and it's a tradition in our house, uh, according to my wife, that the lights <laughs> come down after my daughter's birthday. In fact, what? She trash picked a little tiny Christmas tree the other day, and I said, uh, "What are we going to do with this Christmas tree?" She said, "Well, I just I just got this. Isn't it Isn't it beautiful?" I said, "It's a Christmas tree. This is this is the time. You know why you're able to get this Christmas tree on somebody's curb is because people are taking Christmas trees out of their houses, why, not bringing them into their houses. Why do the lights have to stay up till her birthday? It just sounds like you're putting off work. Actually, she puts them up and takes them down. Okay, so." I pick things up and put them. Uh, what are decorations do you leave up for your other daughter? Uh, when what what month does her birthday fall? She may have some beer cans left over from the yard beer party. Her birthday's in the summer, so well, there, just, there may uh, still be like you leave, a, leave your Fourth of July uh, decorations up for her birthday. Well, that's when we have the yard beer party, yeah, so, so that's what I mean. So there may be I some. I want cans her to get the slighted. Yard. The other one gets to celebrate Christmas on her birthday. This is getting complicated. Do people in your neighborhood keep their lights up this long? You know, the lawyers at Fox 2 ask some really, really <laughs> silly questions. But well, I'm people st- in your neighborhood hire their... I'm starting to get sentimental. Hire people to come hang the lights, right? I mean, that's what they do in Gross Point. Well, what happens in my neighborhood <laughs> is if you leave your lights up long enough, somebody takes them. Really? So I just... Uh, really? No. East, East English Village is a lovely and secure it neighborhood. It is a very lovely neighborhood. And we encourage everyone And you know that from driving in. through it? Oh, no. I, I oh, drive... No. Actually, I'm the only person who drives through my neighborhood at anything close to the speed limit. We get people coming out of Gross Point off of Mac Avenue and hitting out a drive, and they think they're like at the uh, the salt flats where they're trying to set a new land <laughs> speed record. It's very, very annoying. Well, we were down there uh, doing a photo shoot today because ML makes Sean and I do photo shoots. Hey, Carrie. Um, what? Sorry, I'm just responding to oh. one of our our. Uh, our, uh, our followers. Which is great uh, to Scott do Scott Greca when says Lover's Lane pop- would be a great sponsor. You know, my dad used to have a lingerie <laughs> store, so... Uh, Wait, there's what? A little, really? What, what, we'll talk about that another time. But, uh, like the time I had to go pick up some dongs, but that's... Uh, I don't want But your story's a good one. Keep going. Let me, let me not get us... I don't know. I think you picking up dongs is a far more interesting topic. <laughs> uh, rubber dongs. That, yeah, I wasn't... Dildos is what they're called. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know. How old were you? I'll defer to How those of you How many did you have trade. to pick up? Please tell me they were all loose, like not in a bag or a box, and you just got an arm. Okay, full. so if you insist, so so when I came back from <laughs> Ireland, when I when I finished being an intern at the Free Press, I did some traveling in Europe, and I settled in Ireland, and I worked. Anyone there for penis for quite a while. And when I came back, uh, I thought, you know, I'll just come back to newspapers. But the uh, new state of newspapers was just as tough then as it is now in many ways. So I was doing some odd jobs for my uh, odd father. And um, 
helping build a house and all this other crap. Well, he, when he retired from DPD, he opened a lingerie store. So he went from putting people behind bars to behind bras, as they say in Washington. <laughs> and uh, one of the things he did was he said, you know, well, what are you doing? And I said, I, I'm unemployed. So, uh, uh, Carrie, it's great to be back. So then we had to, um, I had to go to a fulfillment center to pick up uh, a box. <laughs> and you know, I didn't know. I didn't even know what a fulfillment center. So I go out there. And there's this big box, and they say, um, you know, are you here from Precious Moments oh, Lingerie? In the box? And I said, uh, uh, yes, I am. And they said, okay, well, um, do you want to, uh, you know, check your shipment? And I'm like, I used to work in a paint store. We get packing lists. You made sure all the brushes and the cans and the rollers mm-hmm. came in. So I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. So we open the box. Outcome. <laughs> Eight huge pink dildos. I was like, okay. Like, so is, are these yours? And I said, this is the order. I did not mind. That's followed by. What did you think you were picking? That's up? followed by eight purple dildos and eight large black dildos. I was say, there had to be black ones. Uh, right? Or is in my house what we call actual size. <laughs> yeah, but, right. um, uh, really? They, they say shape. that in your house? It's Everybody in your house says that? Yeah. Who says that? Yeah. Well, it's... <laughs> the two daughters? The many satisfied ladies who have crossed our threshold. Mm. Or in theory. This is all theory. So I, I packed them up and I got the hell out of there and I was just like, I got to get a job. Did you say to your dad, Here, here's the box of dildos you, went, you wanted me to pick up? Uh, it was never spoken <laughs> That's of. my dad. It was... Uh, it was just something that happened. I think uh, it's probably, uh, probably... You were talking about some pictures earlier, uh, as I recall. Um, that guy so thought they were for you, by the way. No, yeah, yeah we were down Maybe there. Maybe the pink ones. We were down there taking a picture, and, you know, Sean had... And they were not doubles, so... What? Well, no wonder. Did the lingerie store go under? That might be why. Uh, actually, what ended up happening is uh, the other lingerie businesses popped up all over the place and kind of drove them out of business. Funny story... My dad was sued by a lawyer who represented Precious Moments figurines. Really? Because they thought Precious Moments lingerie was infringement of their copyright. Huh. Guess who the lawyer was who sued him? I had no idea. Five Johnny years. Cochran. Herschel Fink. Oh, okay, yeah. Who later Fink. represented Jim Schaefer and yeah. I at the Detroit Free Press as we sued the city of Detroit to get Kwame Kilpatrick's obscene text messages. So you get this sense Did you talk that the world is it? just a snake eating its tail. Did you ever talk to him about it? Like, I did mention it time. to him, and Herschel just kind of laughed. Because <laughs> he won? Did he win? Uh, it's weird. He said, uh, he said my, no, my dad uh, just conceded the case, but... Uh, Herschel said he was not paid, but he found it odd that 24 multicolored dongs showed up at his law office <laughs> with, uh, Did I do good, Daddy? with a note that said, uh, how you like me now? Oh, okay. But um, only parts of that story. I was going to say, though, Sean had to brave you know, the weather this morning. Yes, ice you all did, or, too. It, yeah, but my, I had a half-hour drive there. You, yours ended up being two hours. You did. And yet we still beat him to the location, which was two blocks away from your house. Well, so some people would say the smart guy stayed in while it was warm until everybody else got there. What I like, though, is Mark and I were standing on the corner, and we see ML, Mike, I got to get confused. I'm sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> Pulling up or racing up in your, what is it, a Charger? I don't know what no, you're driving. It's a, it's, a, it's a 300. Yeah, but but the the nice Bullet move. scarred. Was, as he sees us, and it, you know he honks the, cor- uh, honks the car. It was like a dad honk. I like that. Hey there, buddy. Honk, honk. <laughs> And I just thought that was... It was a very daddish move. It was. It was nice. That was my way of saying, these are the only two people hanging out on a corner in my neighborhood who aren't going to make any money today. Really? Are you, you saying something like about earners. our appearance? You don't look like earners to me. I thought that's why you wanted us in the photo shoot, because of how we look. No, 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 no. That's, that's sort of like when you're short, you have shorter guys in the picture, so you look better. I see taller. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm, I'm strictly... I'm, I, the key to my success is be, putting is myself in a goatee. context... What else, right? Where... <laughs> Yeah, how do you like? What do you think there? I, I, uh, my, uh, my hair consultant uh, said it's it's okay. Okay, it, it's funny being out. It's it, a little scratchy for me, but uh, <laughs> being yeah. in the public with you a few times, uh, everyone always uh, recognizes you because you used yeah, to. They be say, on "Hey, TV. Charlie LaDuff! <laughs> no, they always they, actually a couple of times. I think it's always, "Hey, aren't you on TV?" Like yeah. that's what people say. 
Um, are you gonna are you gonna miss that? I don't know. That's a weird thing to not. Really no, miss, I, so. what I get a lot is uh, is. Uh, I mean, you're gonna miss talking about it's your the stories. newsman. Yeah, you know, but um, no, I mean, it's nice when people uh, acknowledge what you appreciate do. your work. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but I, when I was at Channel Four and they were before I went to Channel Four and they were going hardball in the negotiations, uh, the news director said. You know, when you, if you, you know, if you take this job, you know, people are going to know who you are. When you go to restaurants, you get tables and stuff like that. And that's never really happened. But I said to him, and it's true today, I said, I'm going to be the only person working for you who doesn't give a damn if anybody knows who yeah. I am. And in fact, in the work I do, it's better if I'm not recognized because if I'm trying to find out you're doing something you shouldn't be doing or I'm trying to snook, sneak around, snoop around, um, I don't want to be recognized. I went to Lansing one time where I figure people aren't watching Fox 2. And, uh, and uh, people start sending me texts and saying, hey, ML, what are you doing in Lansing? I'm like, I'm wearing shorts. I got a baseball hat on. I got like a sweatshirt. I'm like, how are you? I should yeah, you not can't be, get away with anything. I should be indistinguishable from any other college bum here. And uh, Derek, it's great to be back. But um, stop replying to the Facebook. But, uh, live. <laughs> what is? It's good to be back. We waited for four months. I, know, you know? The, I mean, think of the people listening that aren't uh, watching Facebook Live. Well, they should be. Well, maybe. And you can catch the replay on Facebook Live, right? How, Joy, yeah, how do they do there. that? They just go to they my go to Facebook your page. page. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out, man. We need the downloads. We need the clicks. We need the traffic, because we're trying to keep people like Zot, Ford, and Holly happy. Because we need the support of our sponsors. Our sponsors need the support of our listeners. So you've probably heard plenty about our friends at Zot, Ford, and Holly on, on the Drew and Mike show. I'm here to tell you not only are they known for having the hottest sales staff in Oakland County, but they are also known for sponsoring one of the other big podcasts on the Red Shovel Network. Sean, which one might that be? I don't have no idea. No idea. Ah, the new Maz. Uh, Mark, any uh, guesses? Uh, uh, all of them, right? Uh, at least the Drew and Mike show. I'm a customer. Okay. Um... Mystery man in the corner, uh, Harvey, the invisible rat. Was, he's referring to ML Soul. Of Detroit. Thank you, well, of Harvey. Of course you are. You're reading, doing the read right now. Listen, man. Just do the Just read. Do the There's read, a lot of please. mouth breathers out there. We're Come trying on. to help them out. We're not going to be on Stay much focused. Longer. As you know, one of the best ways. You're still thinking about those dogs. As and I don't have any more, so don't ask after the show. As you know, one of hey, the best news ways. Man, what are you doing with that box of dogs? <laughs> yeah. Can I get that purple one up here? Yeah, keep that stuff at home. Um, uh oh. You did have gray hair and a brown... Bruce. I tried to explain. That's the Walt Frazier. Okay, anyway, so, as you know, one of the... Zod is gone. I cannot focus. Zod is just like, you know, we're pushing steel here, not rubber, but... Uh, sorry, Steve. As you know, uh, one of the best ways to support our Soul of Detroit podcast is to support our sponsors like Zot Ford and DealsInTheD.com. In return, my boy Steve Gabar and his team will make sure your next purchase or lease of a new or pre-owned vehicle is fun, fast, simple, and easy, all while saving you that fat stacks of cash, or as we say on the east side, cash. So if it's time to dump your current hoopty and pick up a fresh fly ride like my 300, although I do have a Ford, I have a Ford C-Max, which I love, go surf Zot, Zot Ford's sensational deals and massive inventory massive pink inventory at dealsinthed.com and be sure to tell them ML Soul of Detroit sent you unless of course you've been offended by anything you've just heard then you can tell them that Drew and Mike sent you but uh, check out uh, Zot Ford and Holly we really need them to support us so we can come back here every week because I am not picking up any more packages for my old man before we move on there's a fellow on facebook live named pete who wants to know how long it took you to grow that mustache I, can i answer that <laughs> oh boy it's not a mustache <laughs> <laughs> he's still growing it yeah it's it's more of a muss right now yeah, it it's is. uh how long does it take you to grow that it's more mustache. of a mustache we're we're going on uh we're going on 52 years there pete and uh and tom you like the soul of detroit hockey jersey i think these are going for what like 75 bucks except for the uh except for the generously proportioned you gentlemen. set the price i don't know okay they're going for 75 bucks us i'm not sure if we're gonna throw shipping and handling in there but check check out <laughs> check out uh what an operation the store yeah down here well, you know, we had, only people could have seen. I mean, we wanted to start at eleven o'clock. We were only two hours late. We charted this I out. On, I think it's on brand for uh, for you and I because we were notoriously late for everything. That's right. ML Soul. When we get there, Detroit. But just like Jesus, it doesn't matter when you get there. You just got to get there, right? And regarding your uh, goatee slash beard, he had each little hair transplanted into his face with a laser, lasered in. Oh man, 
I'm going to go for extensions. Uh, uh, any unfinished business with Fox 2? I mean, how how is that going? Do you want to talk about why it took so long for the December 17th episode? Wait, you're not a Fox anymore? <laughs> 30th. Yeah, no. Uh, I, think, I think last time I was in this basement planning to go to Fox, they sent me a note saying, you know what, don't come here. We'll, we'll pack all your stuff up. And we talked about that yeah. on the last show. If you're just dialing in now, we've got two shows under our belt already. One recorded the day after I left Fox, which we couldn't post until... Monday, and then a show we recorded on December 30th, being optimistic, being hopeful that we'd be clear and free to post those soon. Some um, people were saying that there was no way that was going to be able to be posted anytime soon. Uh, those people were right. <laughs> yes. So so, uh, so we are, uh, Fox and I left on very amicable terms. It was a very, um, it was a very uh, friendly parting. And I'm grateful for that because I value the time I spent at Fox 2. It was a great place for me. I still respect uh, what they do and think it's the best news station in town. Um, But I will tell you, before I left, I had a couple stories ready to go that I don't think made it on the air. Uh, Actually, I had a few. And I'll tell you about two of them. One of them is talking to Bob Carmack, who... um, in his quest to get out from under fraud charges where the city of Detroit has accused him of stealing city land and then selling it for a million dollars. He came up with some emails through the discovery process where the prosecution has to share evidence with the defense that even the city of Detroit, different agencies within the city of Detroit had questions about whether they owned the land that they were accusing Bob Carmack of stealing. And I spoke to uh, Peter Henning, who's a former federal prosecutor and a law professor at Wayne State, who said, this is a pretty significant document in this case because anytime you can raise doubt in a criminal prosecution, hey, Delane, you can get, you can get, hey, I got to give a shout to Delane, very special woman in my life, my first boss, my first boss in a paying journalism job, so... Delane, glad to have you along. Uh, make <laughs> On sure to, Facebook Live. Make sure the boss doesn't Face- catch it because we're not hiring here. Fa- um, Zoos, we cannot do Facebook Live yeah, sorry. Un- it's, until it's solely sponsored by one there's, person. There's too many, too many shiny you objects. Need, you need to do a show blindfolded. Yes. So, uh, so anyway, um, so Carmack you know, has, has come up with something that, that could really make it tough for the prosecution to hang these charges on him. Really? So that was the story I was going to do on my very last day at Fox – but kind of the word came down. Let's just let's just uh, let's just wrap things up here. If it, if that story was done, if that package was all put together and ready to go on air, it was not edited. It was not cut. In fairness, could they put you? Could they put it on though? Even though you're not employed anymore, but you did the work there, could they air it in mid January if they wanted to? I see no reason they couldn't because they have the rights to all my work. I did that while I was on their payroll. So I'm, I'm sure that if uh, Why wouldn't they, if I did some story about Kwame Kilpatrick that becomes suddenly relevant, they will use that. I yeah. mean, so Why wouldn't they run it then if it's a good story, if it's important? Uh, these are questions I can't answer. Uh, I wish I knew what the answers were. But because um, there is a new, you know, we had a scrub alert for the website because you were still on the website sure. after you parted ways, and boy, did that get taken down right away. I think that's pretty standard. I mean, you know, well, I was surprised not. it was up as long as it was. Yeah, but, but the new up, one up is, as long as it was. Right, that's right. What I mean. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why we were on a on a watch to see how long till they delete you from. Yeah, the way, which kind of hurts. I mean, it's very painful being deleted off of a website. It does feel like I contributed, and it may be. <laughs> There should be it's lingering. Like, but I forgot. It's almost like you're dead. <laughs> like you yeah. don't exist anymore. Well, I mean, all my you can still find a lot of my stories by doing a search, but you know. Well, you could if you died too. Yes, exactly. But now there's a promo that runs that you're that you're in on on the TV. I did not know that. Yeah, you're. Well, you didn't know that because I sent you a still picture of it. Well, I mean, I didn't see. It. I mean, I was informed <laughs> of that by uh, by a colleague. And I just I want to know like. If they can, you know, they legally can do it. Why not just? Oh sure, yeah. keep your, you know, your profile up there. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. You wouldn't care if a story you did was done and put together. And it no, ran. I want people to see my work. work I mean, yeah. the reason I do the work is because I think it's important. Because I think people should know about it, and because we worked hard on it. And one of the other things that, that I just think it seems a little petty. Um, that's, my, that's my opinion. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, some some companies have a policy that the minute you're no longer on the payroll, you don't exist. Your your files are locked. You're deleted from this. Your passcodes are changed. You're walked out of the building. So I mean, you know, and these are these are policies, and sometimes there's a good reason. But the biggest surprise to me when the Drew and Mike show left WRIF, you know, they gave us. A week after they... Well, you guys got to have a farewell show, which is I extraordinary. Know. And I'm glad. I think I was there. It was great you to were. be a part of. Incredibly rare. Yeah. And what amazed me, though, is that people in the company actually thought that you would go on there and say disparaging things on the on the broadcast. I'm like, well, well, why? I mean, I don't think we're that petty to do something like that. That just always surprised me that people thought that Drew would do something like that or Mike or anybody would... You know, take it as a time to go, oh, screw the greater media. But I, I just, right. that's not us. Well, it's certainly no way to interview for your next job. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true. It, it has true. a sort of a self policing effect where when you start crapping on your old employer, your next employer is like, uh, yeah, I, that's exactly who I'm looking And we didn't to know that hire? they would be our next employer for yeah, some well, of there's, us. So. There's that too, yeah. But no, I mean, I mean, my my second to last day there, I I broke a a, a decent yeah, story, yeah. and and I think uh, it surprised uh, some people that I would be working right up to the last minute. And I think there was. Were you ever live though for that story? Uh, I think there was some question as to whether that would happen. So we just shot some look lives where you you do stand ups that look like you're right. actually that- saying it. But and I said, you know, hey, if anybody's worried about me going on the set with my my pants down, here's some look lives. So let's just take that off off so the that's table. Kinda, that's kind of what I'm talking about. There was this fear that you would do something, but that I mean, you're professional. Uh, I don't know if there was fear, if it's just some sort of policy, but it it felt a little hurtful. But uh, but you, you know okay? what. I've had I've had mayors get mad at me. I've had governors, senators. I've had cops push me around. I've had people threaten me. So somebody worrying about whether I'm going to flash my junk on TV that doesn't even bother me. Yeah. To me, I'm just like you know what I'm so above that shit that uh, whatever. I mean, to, to me, people who worry about stuff like that, uh, it says more about them than me. So I'm just like you know what, dude. Uh, it would have been nice if they could have gotten their papers all lined up uh, if they wanted you to leave on the 17th. I don't know why it took to what, the 6th? Well, let's just... Major conglomerate, I think they have a few lawyers. Let's just say there was much uh, internal debate, uh, including in, in my own uh, guts about whether I was making the right move. But uh, as, we, as I got closer and closer to the door, I felt more and more confident that it was, in fact, the correct move. And I've had lots of cool offers since then, and I'm talking well, to some people about well. stuff, so... So it's good, and, and and the way I look at it, and I told you this, you know, I felt like like uh, there was a change at Fox, and all of a sudden my horizons were going to be very narrow, but because of that change, my horizons are wide open, and I just feel like I just feel like I can do anything now, and uh, that's great. I, I mean, love I, the I, fact I, that you just referred to your horizons. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it, <laughs> you want to talk about your legacy? My legacy. <laughs> no, there's no legacy. You're such a grand thinker. I, I appreciate that. Man, I played hockey once with Manny Legacy, but uh, that's the only legacy, <laughs> your legacy? I'm, I'm familiar with. Uh, he's his own legacy. But, um, but yeah, no, it's cool. And, and one of the stories that didn't air that, that was fully produced that uh, I was really bummed out about was my, my annual year in review where we looked back at some of the stories yeah. we had done. And we, we did updates, and some of the updates included – uh, Jack Brandenburg, the former state senator who had used some campaign funds to buy oh, yeah. some furniture for his station. office. Yeah. yeah, we caught him. Uh, we caught him at the gas station. Where he goes, I don't care about your questions. He's got a very distinct way of speaking. Great, great video work too, as oh. he pulled away because he left the he left the gas cap. Yeah, he was he was pretty cool. Like it didn't bother him. But well, then why don't you put your gas cap in, Buster? <laughs> What's the and, and I think I've told you before, gas stations are the best places to get people. Yeah, because everybody has to go to a gas station, and if you go to a gas station, it's because you need gas, so you're you can't be there drive away. Yeah, and once you put that thing in the tank, you're going to be there a while. That's true. He was at a gas station. Your last stakeout, you got her at a gas station. Yeah, the Highland Park school board president, we See, got her at a uh, gas station. So right here. Gas stations are great. You're letting out all your secrets. Well, that horizon is hey, getting smaller. It's, it's all, anybody who's been watching, uh, I'm, I'm an open book. What's the update? But, uh, so him. he told us he was going to donate that furniture to charity. Mm-hmm. Well, after checking his most recent campaign finance uh, report, there's no indication that the furniture was donated. And when I called him for comment, 
he didn't return that call. Oh, so I guess he I'm sure still someone, doesn't care about my questions. I'm sure someone there will follow up on that story. Oh, um, they're probably working around the cliff. They're working in shifts. Um, we also um, we also did an update on Raquel Castaneda Lopez, the city councilwoman oh, yeah. Yeah. who had the derelict house across the street from um, Clark Park, where, by the way, I'll be playing hockey on Saturday, leading uh, a team against Lawrence Tech's uh, alumni team at 6.30 on Saturday night if you want to come out. It's a big party. It's going to be a fun time. Come out and see the Bulldogs, my Bulldogs, skate against Lawrence Tech's Blue Devils alumni team at Clark Park. That's Saturday the 11th at 6.30 p.m. This is part of a tournament Lawrence Tech has going on at Clark Park that starts Friday through Sunday, so there's going to be a lot of great hockey, a lot of great times. Come check that out. And I will say that the neighborhood around uh, Clark Park is a lot nicer because the councilwoman finally fixed up her she house. Did. Okay, good. She was right across the street. We had my partner, uh, John Brzezowski, Great fantastic guy. partner. Great guy. He went back every couple months to shoot video of her house so we could show the transformation from the pit it was when we exposed it to what now I would say is a very uh, respectable house that now complies with city code. I still have some questions about the color scheme, but that's a matter of taste, not a matter of complying with city ordinance. So we got some results there. Also, the uh, the judge who was accused of covering up the abuse of her grandkids oh, yeah. has yeah. been reassigned from the family court to the criminal court. So there's really? very little likelihood that she will be hearing abuse and neglect cases, which many people feel is results. a good thing. Absolutely. And so we thought... Michael Morris, how you doing, my man? And as as a matter, not the lawyer, as a matter uh, of wrapping I it up, too. I thought it'd be so cool at the end to just kind of get on top of a live truck and sort of look like a sea captain going out to sea. And I was told that due to OSHA regulations, I could not get on top of one of our live trucks because there's not a rail up there, and so it's not oh, safe. Oh, Lord. So we came up with a compromise, which was I would do sort of a Nixon thing and get into the Fox 2 chopper oh, and just, just wave and fly off into, into the horizon, which we did. We shot it. Really? It's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's oh. funny. It's poignant. I wish people could have seen it, but I don't think it ever got on the air, and at this point, I don't How often have you been on the Fox 2 chopper? Twice. Twice? Like, I would find every reason to get on that chopper. Oh, no, 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 no. So do you, you, so you, know, the band, you know the band U2, right? I think I've heard of okay. them, yeah. And you know where the, the name comes from, right? No, I actually know. Okay. I don't. So I never it, thought it, about it. It was a spy plane that was shot down um, over the Soviet Union in the 1960s. And the pilot was a guy named Gary Powers. And he spent years in a Soviet prison as a spy. And he eventually was released. And he became a TV news chopper pilot. And Gary Powers who survived a high-altitude spy plane crash oh, no. and imprisonment in the Soviet Union, died in a news chopper crash. So I have never wanted to go up in a he news chopper. And let me tell you, the pilots are great. These guys are really, really yeah. good. And so when I was at Channel 4, they came running down the hall one day, and they said, hey, 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 somebody, who's, like, can, you go up in the, in, can you go up in the chopper? And at that time, it would land on the roof at, at Channel 4 downtown. And I said, no. What's what? going on? They said, we need somebody to go up in the chopper because we got to cover a story about a police chief dying in a chopper crash. And I said, <laughs> you want me to get in a get chopper, in chopper! <laughs> to cover a chopper crash? No way. Oh, come on, you puss. And Mark Santia, who was Santia always ready for it. anything, he's like, I'll go. So <laughs> I flew in on a helicopter. So he took off and obviously he lived and he's doing very well and he's he's thriving as a reporter in uh in New York and in, in when the, were in you where were when were you in the Fox 2 helicopter then? So I went one time because we were doing a story looking at um it may have been looking at uh oh I know what it was. It's when the 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 federal government shutdown under Obama was going to lead to the possible closure of the newly renovated traffic air traffic control tower at City Airport well, in you Detroit. Got, you you got to have a chopper for that. So we wanted to get a chopper shot of the neighborhood. And Can't because, do that with a drone. Because really, in that neighborhood, one of the few going concerns there is City Airport. Yeah, so that was appropriate. And it was fine. The, the, the pilot was great. Uh, it, was a, it was a smooth ride. It was a lot of fun. 
And so we did it for this sort of farewell shot. And uh, as it was lifting off the ground, it was kind of freaky. It kind of reminded me when I went bungee jumping, except that that I was going up. And it, it, it had this weightless sensation. It felt flying. really cool. I love riding on helicopters. Yeah, and I just, I just started to think to myself, why, why didn't I do this more often? See? Who's Gary Powers? <laughs> well, he's dead, but... I got to give a shout out to Ron Pillabotion who's written in on... You know why? Because when I filled in for you guys on, on 105.1 with yes. Gary McCarty, yes. I had a dream that he was the general manager of the Pistons... And that um, he who uh, Ron Ron okay. one of my hockey buddies that uh, Captain Ron that he had been fired by Stan Van Gundy, and so so you had to say I know so now. Van Gundy came on the show. Oh, he did. Okay. And I said, "Hey, uh, Coach, I got a weird request." Uh, and he goes right away because he was a funny guy. He goes yeah, like, he's great. "I don't like where this is headed." I said, "I had a dream the other day that you fired my buddy as GM of the Pistons, and I was wondering." if you could apologize for firing him in my dream <laughs> and Van Gundy being a sport was like, uh, I don't know what I did, but I'm, I'm really sorry, Ron. Wow. And I said, thank you very much. Nice of him to make that right. And we both felt better. Even though Ron didn't know he'd been fired, he, he, felt, he felt much better. So, okay. <sighs> but, you know, we had a plan for <laughs> this know, show. We really did. We had a plan for this Your show. box of dildos derailed it. <sighs> As it so often does. And usually that makes a party. That's the weird thing. It's a good story. I was very kind intrigued. Of ended the, I yeah. didn't know that you ever worked for a lingerie store. Oh, so, okay. So real quick. So I couldn't <laughs> Nothing's find... Nothing's ever real. I couldn't find a... New, long story is well told. I, I couldn't <laughs> find a newspaper job. And I was getting to a point after staying on my, my mom's couch for like 10 months. My folks got divorced way long ago. My mom's uh, too high, uh, high-toned and, and high-class to stick around with that knucklehead. Anyway... Um, <laughs> I was thinking, well, maybe it's time to join the family business. And shortly after that, my dad ended up closing the store. So I was like, damn it! So it's your fault. It could be. I, I'm, as I'm, I've been told over the years, many things are my fault. Um, and both parents agree on that. Uh, and you know what I should have done to get rich? Gamble. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Christmas has come and gone, but the Super Bowl is quickly approaching. Uh, do not... Take the points, no matter how much they give you, if you're betting on the Lions. We've seen just... That could be a futures bet, right? Uh, I don't know if futures are out yet. A million yeah. years from now? Do they do it that far out? Not this far out. Okay. I don't think so. All right. You know what they do have future bets for? <laughs> this is terrible. Lions losing every game? Um, some bets about the United States and Iran. Oh, well, there's... Thanks I for- think my favorite bet in that whole string of thing at my bookie is uh, if France enters a war... The over under on how long until they um, surrender? Surrender, and I think they had it at forty seven and a half days. Ah oh, man, what that, that Maginot line was such a good idea. It just didn't work out. Okay, well we've seen what our teams are capable of this season, and now it's time to get your last bets in before the Super Bowl. The reigning Patriot champions have already been knocked out. Tom Brady gone. Who will step up in their place? Will the Ravens be able to get it done? Lamar Jackson? I bet you have a gut feeling about where the next Super Bowl banner is hung. I just bet on that. And you can bet on just about anything at mybookie.ag. Make your predictions a reality. MyBookie is one of the most trusted in the industry. If you're looking for a sports book to make some bets for the bowl games, MyBookie is where you want to go. So uh, a buddy of mine, Cam Evans and Neil Rohr, who's the uh, the voice of Oakland Grizzlies. Rule. and mm-hmm. Rule. And uh, the Detroit... Um, City Football Club, they have a podcast called Straight Cash Homie, which you should check out. They talk about legalized gambling, sports books in Michigan. This is why you need to sign up for mybookie.com, mybookie.ag. Sorry, I'm new at this, folks. Mybookie.ag, because it will be months, if not years, before you can actually place a wager at any of Detroit's casinos. You can do it right now. At mybookie.ag, use the promo code SOUL, S-O-U-L, and they will double your initial deposit. Look at all the rules for getting your money back and all that other stuff, and never bet more than you can afford to lose. But if you got a wager in mind, you want to do a prop bet, you want to do some parlays, which are kind of a fun and funky way to make big money on some sometimes uh, unusual combinations, MyBookie.ag is the place to go. They got everything from the NBA to the Premier League, which I believe is called the Premier League for Mark and some of his two goals a day uh, habit fans. 
They've got the fastest payouts, the best promotions, and a very helpful 24-7 customer service team. You can even pool your bets together for a bigger payout. Let's say you got a couple of big favorites this week. Parlay wagers let you bet multiple games together, and they all come through. You win big. So, mybookie.ag, you deposit a grand. They give you a grand. You got a grand to spare? Damn. I envy you. Anyways, all you got to do is use promo code SOUL to activate the offer. Once again, that's promo code S-O-U-L to get your extra cash from mybookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid. I won't change my mind on anything, regardless of the facts that are set out before me. I'm dug in, and I'll never change. Ray Nut, Ray Nut, Ray Nut, Ray Nut, Ray Nut, Infinity, Ray Nut, Infinity, Plus One, No. We've got to make up some time on the show, so I picked a great debate that is so obvious we don't even have to waste any time on this. In fact, I've wasted enough time setting it up. The greatest college football coach in the state of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh versus Mark D'Antonio. The answer is obviously, gentlemen. Chris Creighton. Oh, at Eastern. Nice. Done a hell of a Green job. and white. Yeah, but they really let that game slip away I, against Pitt. I would like to point out first that Sean didn't fall asleep or get bored with the show. Yeah. What happened there? Dysentery. You showed me a phone number and you said, well, radio, when, like you I, forgot about a radio interview. Well, but I, when I agreed to the radio slot. Are you cheating on us? When I agreed to the radio slot, <laughs> did you, we, did you plug we, the soul of Detroit we had on the said radio. we were going to be done by noon, so I yes, figured one thirty, I would be perfectly safe. Now the reason so we're little, when you made us wait out on the corner. The reason we were an hour. The reason we're a little behind is because somebody had to drive here from a, a communist nation. <laughs> so the People's I, Republic of losing bowl games. Yeah, I had I did forget about it in a way, but uh, in in fairness, I booked it based on your schedule and. Uh, when you were putting on your makeup or whatever it was you were doing that kept us on that corner for all that time. I am so sorry. It's okay. We you know, Leduff, Leduff came to me when I showed up at Fox 2 and he said, you, you and me, it's hard. I'm glad we're doing Facebook Live because I can do the Charlie gestures. We're going to be the only guys here who don't wear makeup. <laughs> yeah. That's us, the only guys. And I'm like, okay. So uh, the day after his infamous uh, encounter in Corktown, I saw him in federal court because uh, Kilpatrick, I think, had just been, he was getting sentenced. Uh, or the verdict was being read. I think it was the verdict was being read. And I saw Chai I said, dude, you look great. I, I thought you got into a dust-up. And he goes, makeup. Oh, no. That's the only, I think he said that's the only time. Yeah, that's the only time. Yeah. That's the only time. And he did look good. He looks good, kind of so, beat up. So you just want to toot your horn about D'Antonio. Is that what it is? No, it speaks for itself. I don't even have to say the name. Everybody knows who the best college football coach is in Michigan. Because you're going to do it based on expectations and just because Michigan fans have enormous expectations of winning a national championship in year one, two, or three of Jim Harbaugh, and he hasn't done that, that he's a failure. Well, isn't it, we're going on season six, couldn't he finish higher than third in the Big Ten East? Well, he didn't have a three and nine or a seven and six season either. And he didn't I mean, win I'm a bowl saying. game, he didn't win a Big Ten championship, he sure. hasn't gone, I mean... It's clear. And and here's a guy who's getting four- and five-star recruits. Come on. What are we even arguing for? Not as let's, many as he used Let's to. get right to Geek of the Week. Not at all. Well, I'll let Sean break the tie then. Uh, He's <laughs> not going to break the tie. He's going to choose both of them. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I hate to do this to you, Mark. But uh, Pick the baby Jesus. It. It's I'll a be, safe way. I'll I think be, D'Antonio does more with less. How about sure, that? Sure, sure. And to me, that makes him... But uh, is part of coaching recruiting as well? It is. If you're going to... But when you're trying to recruit to a municipal stadium up there that's nothing but gray, drab, ugly concrete, it's the worst stadium in the Big Ten. I hate to say that. But they have great facilities. Because they have great do. basketball facilities. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is, this is like uh, they say when they you can't win the there. law, you have to argue the, uh, the evidence uh, or the witnesses. I, this I is think, like saying you can't argue that D'Antonio is not the best college football I think for a guy you, that has to recruit. You're arguing the building. For a guy that has to recruit in the shadow of Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, and... I guess those are the main three, right? Maybe Penn State a little bit, because they used to go get players in Pennsylvania until Narduzzi left. Yeah, now we just abuse people. I don't know. D'Antonio is more stubborn, and um, we'll see if he can turn this around. I don't know if he can. Maybe he got lucky with that three-year run. He did recruit some questionable characters. He he tried to take that final step, and you're right. He did. He got into... Do you think that was a mistake to maybe go after those guys? Did did it seem like he left those three star guys that he was building to that great team that was in the playoffs. 
I don't think it was intentional to say, now let's go for the four and five to, stars. Right? I think they always yeah. went for the four and five yeah. stars. It's just now, you now those guys, after they made the college football playoff, now those guys started taking their phone calls. And you've got to continue. I'm sure they contacted every five-star recruit in the country. And when they didn't call them back, they're like, okay, now let's, let's spend some time on people we can get. But they also had to know, as much as they believed in their own ability to develop guys, they had to know. They had a couple of classes that set up that three-year run, the Rose Bowl, Cotton Bowl, mm-hmm. college football playoff. One of the classes that Connor Cook was in, they had eight guys in that that class get to the NFL, and they were all three stars except for maybe one. Yeah, that's and impressive. And you, you just can't – it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that the, the teams that win in the playoffs don't mm-hmm. recruit don't recruit like that. So our next great debate topic, best Michigan collegiate quarterback still playing in the NFL playoffs? Kirk Cousins or Tom Brady? Kirk Cousins! Is you that, like that! He's the only you one. like that! Yeah, nice catch line. <laughs> oh, man, the geeks have inherited the earth. I win! I do that. What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek? Or we're turning into cool guys? On mustache alone, and I say that <laughs> as someone who aspires to somebody having a mustache, um... John Bolton is our Geek of the Week. Not just because he looks a lot like the professor from Felix the Cat, who was not a good dude, but because he's playing games, and I don't know why he's playing games. When, For those of you who don't know, John Bolton was the uh, national security advisor in the Trump administration. Trump rightly passed him over the first time saying... I think he might be good, but I don't think that mustache looks good. For the mustache alone, I'm not going to hire him. He's now, not he, quite the war hawk. Yeah, he did come around and hire him uh, to his chagrin because Bolton left and says he quit, but Trump says he was fired, and we're going to leave all that for, for other people to work out. But Bolton uh, was said to have described the contact between the Ukraine and the president's men, the uh, three amigos, as a drug deal. And he let it be known during the impeachment hearings in the House that he had a lot of stuff that might be worth hearing. But his lawyer said, you know, he's kind of would like to know whether he should do the testimony or not. And and the House Democrats wanting to move quickly did not want to get bogged down in court. So they just plowed ahead without Bolton. Now that the impeachment matter is headed to the Senate, and there's some debate whether there should be more witnesses. Bolton pops up and says, after careful consideration and study, if the Senate issues a subpoena for my testimony, I am prepared to testify. Now, I don't want to say the guy is flaky. I don't want to say he's not reliable. And I don't want to suggest that his pending book might have something to do with this. But this feels a lot to me like a guy who's looking for some attention. Well, it's you easy. would know. It's easy. <laughs> oh, first man. my building, so dejected. Now my ego. Your building, Spartan Stadium. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where champions your, your building played a few years ago. Actually, champions still play there. They just come from Columbus. That's the problem. And they lost. <laughs> I think that one cut deeply, Sean. <sighs> I'm sorry. The I'm little, just calling it the way it is. The little pile of concrete that could. But anyways, John Bolton, we don't know what you're doing. We don't know what you're going to do. We don't know why you're doing it. We don't know whether you'll do it. But we ain't going to buy your book. The best we can do for you, my friend, is to name you our Geek of the Week. We love hearing from you. You can write us at mlsoulofdetroit at gmail.com. You can post on my Twitter page, which is at Elric, or on Facebook, ML Elric. Uh, Instagram, I think, is ML underscore Elric. Or you could give us a call at 1313 Butterfield 89070 because we want this show to be as much your show as it is our show. Now, we're not going to share any of the sponsor money, but we. You know, I mean, let's be reasonable people. I mean, I'm, I'm freaking unemployed, okay? I mean, how much do you want from me? Uh, 
so dark. Anyway, um, so we this 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 week's uh, guest in room seven six zero nine is brought to us by listener Mike Johnson, who suggests that we all check out the darker side of the human league, and this is the sound of the crowd. The thing about some new wave songs is you wait for them to end, but they don't really end because even when the band goes home, the synths just, they're programmed. They just keep playing that beat over and over and over. So the idea of Room 7609, just to reset it for folks who may be joining us now or it's been so long since we were on the air, may have forgotten, is to highlight music from new wave bands that you knew but you didn't know they did that song and we think they deserve a little attention for some of their fine work that was overlooked or to highlight new wave bands that never quite got their due and are do i think most people know the human league people know don't you want me they know keep feeling fascination parentheses keep feeling and parentheses fascination oh that's deep that is deep but the sound of the crowd shows sort of the darker side of the human league it's got a little more texture it's a little more, uh, dare I say, guttural. Uh, but the Human League is, is, to me, a really interesting band because like a lot of the bands we talk about, 
there's an interesting genealogy there. So when the Human League started out, it was basically Martin Wave and Martin Ware, excuse me, and Craig Marsh who recruited this guy named Philip Oakley, who couldn't play an instrument. They didn't know if he could sing, but he looked fantastic. <laughs> that sounds so perfectly new wave. And so they bring him into the new wave band, uh, which becomes the Human League. In short order, they split over artistic differences. Now, how do you have artistic differences with a guy who can't play an instrument and might not be able uh, to sing? They wanted him to play, and he, didn't, he couldn't. Yeah, it could be like, hey, dude, do more than press the black keys. Throw a few white keys in there. So Martin and Craig left to form Heaven 17, which we've played before, which is one of my, my favorite new wave bands. And from that time on, the only consistent member of the Human League, or from start to finish, has been Philip Oakley. And after Martin and Craig left, two fine-looking gentlemen... Uh, Joanne Catherall and Susan Ann Sully joined. Joanne's the brunette, Suzanne's the blonde. That's an upgrade in my book over uh, the guys from Heaven 17. <laughs> so the Human League became prettier, poppier, more successful. And, uh, and you know them for the radio hits you've heard. But I think The Sound of the Crowd, thanks to Mike Johnson for bringing that to our attention, is well worth... A little time in room 7609. Uh, Before we jump, a quick note on the origin of the name The Human League. It arose from a science fiction war game because in 2415, 2415, so about 300 years from now, there will be a Human League. Oh, cool. And they are going to want independence from Earth, which right now, independence from (laughs) a big powerful thing with a tremendous gravity has special meaning. So uh, so that's the Human League, the sound of the crowd. Boys, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I like it. I do. Yeah, They okay. have more hits than I even realized they do. They did. Oh, yeah. Great band. Great band. So that's great name. The Human yeah. League? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a name of a great charity on Seinfeld. That was the, the Human Fund. The Human Fund. Yeah. Helping people, helping people. For humans. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Human Fund for humans. It was great till the IRS found out about them. Exactly. Uh, we'd like to have our own problems with the IRS um, because <laughs> so many people have donated to us. We don't know where to hide the money. Uh, they can do that at uh, mlsolvedetroit.com. Hit the donate button. Uh, we'd love to have so much sponsor money pouring in that uh, that we are uh, just 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 buried that it it changes who we are as people because we've become so obnoxiously yes. rich. Uh, in the make meantime, us, make us worse people. Yeah. In the meantime, we would just settle for people supporting our sponsors. So they can continue to support us. That would be Hall Financial for your mortgage or your refi. Zot Ford and Holly. If you're looking for a sweet Ford, check them out. Ford's doing some pretty groovy things, including that new electric Mustang. Mm-hmm. And MyBookie.ag. Let's get those wagers in. If we're going to keep MyBookie as a sponsor, folks, I have to be completely candid with you. We need some people to activate the promo code Soul S O U L. And I'm going to do that myself. Believe me, I I want to help keep food on my own table. So if you're planning to lay a wager, don't wait for the casinos. Straight Cash Homie Podcast will tell you why that's foolish. Go to mybookie.ag, create an account. But please, don't. if you got a problem gambling, we don't need the sponsor that bad. Don't, don't let us be part of your problem. But if you like to have some fun and you can control it, just like I like to have a drink and I can control it, <laughs> if you're drunk, don't meet me at the bar. You know, let, Let's be reasonable, folks. Please support our sponsors. Of course, we support you. We, we appreciate you supporting us. And your patience. And your Through patience. These trying times. Right. And in case something funny happens again, just subscribe to the podcast because when we're back, it'll pop up. Now, we should get back to our regular midday Thursday posting schedule. So we hope to be a regular part of your life. And please make all of our partners on the Red Shovel Network part of your life. You know the Drew and Mike show. It's been here. It's the flagship. It's worth every minute they have uh, that you have to spare. There's, of course, Charlie Duff's No BS News Hour and No Filter Sports with Bob, Denny, and Eli. Uh, we're proud to be a part of the Red Shovel Network because what do you do with a shovel? You dig with a shovel, and who knows better than my friend Cyrus. So, Cyrus, take us out. Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? A lot of reg.